If you cut videos with DaVinci Resolve and care about your audio, then this tutorial is for you. There are tricks you can do using the fully featured DAW, that's Digital Audio Workstation included on the Fairlight page, like stacking new audio clips automatically from your bin by command dragging a whole batch of music tracks to an empty timeline space to try out, that's command drag. Oh, and if you're on a PC, that's control and drag. And just like that, you have new stereo tracks created and stacked vertically for each song you'd like to test out. To mute them, you can turn clips on and off with D to disable or enable them. And if you stick around until the end, you're gonna learn a thing or two you didn't know to use Fairlight as a video editor to edit your video's audio much faster and easier. We're spending today on the Fairlight page, which is this music note icon at the bottom of the DaVinci Resolve interface. But it's a great idea to learn that Shift 7 will take you there directly from the edit page. So if you're on the edit page, Shift 7 over, and you can integrate all these tips to work between pages, more like they're just different timeline views and not workflow steps. That's what I do anyways. Rename, reorder, and hide tracks. In the upper left of the Fairlight page, click Index, and then tap on the Tracks tab. If you click the name field, you can quickly rename them to be more descriptive of what's on the track. That could be the type of mic, the talent's voice on the mic, or if the track is for music or sound effects. These custom labels can help you stay organized so you or an audio engineer can EQ at a track level. To quickly rename all the audio tracks one after the other without grabbing the mouse, you can actually use the Tab key on the keyboard to jump to the next track. Another helpful thing you can do in the track index is to click and drag to reorder them. Maybe you wanna prioritize a track to be higher than another one. Just click and drag the tracks here, and this is the order that's gonna be mirrored back over on the edit page. That's shift four to jump back over to video editing mode and see how it's the same. Now let's shift seven back over to Fairlight and look at that index one more time. There's an eyeball icon that you can turn on and off. This is gonna hide an active track to clean up your desktop if you've got limited screen space. It's kind of like a shied After Effects layer, so you're still gonna hear the hidden audio track in the mix, but it's just a nice space saver over in Fairlight. Automatic keyframe music ducking. This tip goes out to all my Final Cut Pro friends that missed the range selection tool for selecting and ducking a music track under the dialog. Well, it turns out you can do this with Fairlight using the Edit Selection tool. First, Click the Timeline View options to turn on your video tracks, because that's always helpful to see where the picture changes. And also turn on your gain line to display those. Now click to use the Edit Selection tool, but before you use it, you might want to increase the height of your track by clicking and dragging or holding Shift with your scroll wheel, because where you position the Edit Selection tool, it matters. If you use the tool on top half of the clip, you can select a range, which is what we want for this tip, but if you hover over the bottom, it's gonna move the clip's position around on the timeline. So make a selection on the top half of the clip by clicking and dragging the area you wanna lower the volume, and then over the gain line, drag that line down, and it's gonna automatically create four keyframes that move the selection of the music level down so the dialogue can cut through the mix. Another really cool thing about the edit selection tool is that it lets you play back your timeline while using it to make changes. It's not gonna force a pause. Now, if you did this manually, you would need to option click each keyframe, which is much more tedious. Or you could do a similar technique in the dynamics window with sidechain compression using ascend and listen, but honestly, Simply moving the gain line down is a great way to duck audio and it behaves just like Final Cut Pro's range selection tool. Sample level audio repair. And now, just like in Pro Tools, you can surgically remove pops and clicks by manually redrawing actual audio samples. Click and drag with the arrow selection tool to smooth out abrupt changes. And by smoothing out the shape of the sine wave, pops and clicks, they disappear from your audio when you play it back. Just zoom all the way into the sample level with Option or Alt on a PC with a mouse scroll wheel. And there's also a horizontal zoom slider here in the toolbar if you forget that, but it's option scroll wheel. Recording a voiceover with a dehydrated, dry mouth will give you lots of pops and clicks. Anyways, find the segment with an abrupt change and take a listen to that pop. Dry mouth will dry mouth, 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 mouth. Now smooth it out by dragging and drawing a smooth line. Take a listen. Dry mouth will dry mouth will dry mouth will. And the pops are gone. If you've ever messed with redrawing samples and you're past the point of an undo, you can also right click and choose Reset Edited Samples. 
track waveform zoom. Sometimes you just need to see the waveforms a little bit easier, but you don't want to increase the volume to see what's really there because your mix is already in a good spot. Well, one thing that's similar to Avid is that you can increase the track waveform zoom by option command mouse wheel scrolling to change the appearance of the waveform, which is perfect for seeing the quiet moments. So you've got bigger waveforms without making the clip louder. That shortcut was option command on a Mac and alt control with the mouse wheel on a PC. Super helpful and only on the Fairlight page. Hey, that is five tips down, only two to go. So real quick, I wanna welcome you if you're new to Creative Video Tips. I'm Chadwick, this channel is all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. I love teaching the lesser known DaVinci Resolve tricks. So if you're into that, go ahead and subscribe right now with a bell and introduce yourself down in the comments so we can be friends and then you're not gonna miss out on the next video. Non-destructive layered audio editing. Sure, you know your timeline stacks up audio tracks, but did you know that you can have a layered stack within a single track? And what makes this layered audio track so special is that it doesn't mix the layers together. It's like audio on or off based on the highest layer at full opacity. This is layered audio editing, and it's turned on by going to the timeline drop-down menu and choosing layered audio editing. That enables it. Then to see the layers, go to View, Show Audio Track Layers. And let's set up the timeline here by making the track as large as possible by shift scroll wheel, mousing it up real big because we really want to see those waveforms of our music track. And that's because you'll get to see a ghost waveform image overlaid one track over the other. And this is perfect for lining up downbeats of a song. Just click and drag the lower layer to visually match up the beats and smooth the transition by always using the topmost layer to create a crossfade. After you drag a fade handle to crossfade the cut point, all of the sound is coming from the topmost layer. But if you haven't caught it yet, you still have all the sound available on the lower layer. So another excellent use for layered audio tracks is to audition out different voiceover narration takes. In a world where computers could edit anything, DaVinci Resolve was the best. You can label each VO take with a different clip color with a right click, rearrange them and constrain the position to move one on top of the other with a shift mouse drag, and even cut up a clip to choose the best segment of a clip, all the specific selects, and put them all at the top of the stack. Loudness normalization. Did you know that you can mix two spec for YouTube and all the major delivery platforms with consistent results with the loudness meters that are built directly into Fairlight? Loudness measures audio over time, which is how you actually perceive sound and not the instantaneous audio levels. I have a great in-depth video that I'd love for you to check out all about this, and it's gonna be linked up in the description or something. But still, the gist is that it helps you set an optimal listening volume to your mix so that no one needs to reach and turn up that volume and platforms like YouTube aren't turning it back down because it's too hot. Now, one quick way to loudness normalize in DaVinci Resolve is to go up to the timeline menu and bounce mix to new track. Choose the destination track and have that be a new track and click OK. And Resolve is gonna bake a new file on your disk with all your mix work applied into a single stereo track that we're gonna solo. This is an audio only version of a video mix down. Now once this clip is rendered, you can right click and choose to analyze audio levels. If the loudness isn't as loud as you need, you can select the mix and right click to normalize audio levels. Set them to an appropriate level like minus 14 LKFS for YouTube with a minus one decibel true peak Analyze audio levels again, and you'll be in a good ballpark to maximize your loudness for YouTube. It's not an exact normalization like you can get from Adobe Audition, but it's still very close and super useful. And if you found this DaVinci Resolve audio tutorial useful, check out the videos I have on screen right now to learn more. And because there is so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video. Thank you so much for watching.